Welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to solve problem 4.14 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now, this problem asks us to do the following. It says, what is the probability that an electron in the ground state of hydrogen will be found inside the nucleus? Okay, so we are going to be applying what we learned solving the hydrogen atom. Now, there are four parts, right? A, B, C, and D. Let's, of course, begin by doing part A. So what I'll do now is just go down here where we have part A. So first we want to calculate the exact answer and we will assume that our wave function, which is what I wrote down, down here, this is the wave function for the ground state that we found previously. If you don't know where this came from, then you need to go back because it is imperative, it is very important that you know uh, at least where this comes from. You don't really need to memorize it, maybe throughout the course a little bit, but usually you just look it up I mean, it isn't too relevant to memorize it, but for now you need to at least understand where it came from. That's very important for this course. Okay, um, so we want to assume that this wave function is correct all the way down to r equals zero. Now, of course, that is a little bit questionable in, in reality, because if this is our proton, which of course comprises uh, our hydrogen atom, and we want to find the probability of our electron being somewhere in here, right? So we would be integrating from zero all the way to b which is here the radius of the nucleus which is well just the proton in this case well in that case this is going to be the electron there we have to keep in mind that we never really talked about what happens inside the proton we only talked about the potential caused by the proton outside right we talked about the interaction between the proton and the electron we never talked about Right in the Hamiltonian, we only had the kinetic part, right, the, the momentum part, p squared over 2m, plus the potential. We never talked about, and this potential being, of course, a, of the hydrogen atom, uh, we never really talked about anything going on inside, so there's no reason why our solution should uh, really correspond to what's going on inside the proton, where the physics is very different. Um, but we're going to assume it anyways, and hopefully our answer will be relatively okay, at least interesting for us to study this. Um, now keep in mind, we are going to be using the ground, uh, the ground state wave function, psi100. We could in principle use any if the problem asked for a different one. So it could be possible that your teacher maybe asks you to do the, to do the same thing, but with maybe psi210, psi2-1, you know, just uh, different combinations of the quantum numbers. The procedure would be the same, the integrals would be different, and of course the numerical value would be different. Okay, so having said all that, let's actually begin. How do we find a probability in quantum mechanics? Well, we have to integrate over all of the relevant space, and what do we integrate? The square of our wave function, right? The probability density is what that is. And we are now in spherical coordinates, so of course we do integrate over d3r. Okay, now what is d3r? This means integrate from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi, and 0 to b, right? We are not integrating over all of space, just 0 to b. That's the relevant part. We want to find the probability of finding uh, inside uh, the nucleus. And now what is our wave function? Well, it is this thing squared. So we get 1 over pi a cubed, the square root goes away, e to the minus 2r over a. And now we still need to include r squared sine of theta. And now we have dr, d, and this would be the theta d phi. Okay, so um, never forget we're integrating in spherical coordinates, so do not forget about this. Okay, do not forget about r squared sine theta. That is a very, very common mistake that students make while taking quantum mechanics. Um, they just forget to include it and you will get very different answers. Okay, so now we just need to actually solve this. Now, a part of it is very easy, right? We're integrating from zero to two pi and there is no phi dependence. So we simply get two pi from the first integral. Now, we have to integrate sine theta, so we will have to integrate from 0 to pi sine theta d theta. Now this is such a common integral, uh, we already know the value, it's 2, but just to make sure, this would be uh, the cosine theta, right, and we will have to include a minus sign of course, and we have to evaluate between 0 and pi, 
So minus, and we have cosine at pi, which is minus one, minus cosine at zero, which is one. So we simply get two as we had said. So this integral gives us another factor of two, right? So we end up getting four. Then we have this integral right here, which will be a little bit more uh, complicated. So let me um, perhaps now get rid of this part. And this we will also write down here. So pi a cubed. So of course we can simply get rid of uh, our pi's here and there. Okay, now let's rewrite the remaining of the integral. So now we have integral from zero to uh, b, e to the minus two r over a, r squared dr. So this is what we now need to integrate. So you can use your favorite integration method. What I'm going to do is just integrate by parts twice. Okay, so what I'm going to do is say, okay, let u equal r squared, du will equal to r, and dv is going to be e to the minus 2r over a dr. So v is going to be the integral of this. So that's going to be minus a over 2 times e to the minus 2r over a. So now let's uh, actually uh, solve the integral. So let's call it i just to make this uh, very, very clear. So here, just using integration by parts, first we need to multiply these two. So we get r squared minus a over 2 e to the minus 2r over a. And we have to evaluate between 0 and b. Then we have minus the product of these two. However, there's already a minus sign. So we get plus this one half cancels out with this two. So we end up with an a outside. And then we have the integral between 0 and b of r e to the minus 2r over a dr. So we need to integrate by parts once again. Okay, so um, here we're going to just say, okay, once again, u is going to be r, du is going to be dr. It's very important in this sort of integrals that you will encounter very often. In fact, there is a formula that you, that you can learn for it. I have showed it in some videos and I usually do it when we have higher powers of, of r. In this case, I don't think it's really worth it to go through the trouble. Um, but there's a formula that you could memorize um, if you are really interested in that. And then we have dv, which is going to be, um, this is e to the minus 2r over a dr. Now we integrate and we get minus a over 2 e to the minus 2r over a. So again, um, let's now write i so i will write this entire thing not only the integral so we have minus now let's evaluate at b so minus b squared a over 2 e to the minus 2b over a and then we have minus if eva we evaluate now at zero but we have another minus so it is now plus but evaluating at zero we simply get zero because of this r okay so we are now done with that part so check and now we go here so there we have a times now this thing. So we have to multiply these two. So we end up with, let me move the camera. We end up with minus a over 2r e to the minus 2r over a evaluated between 0 and b. And then we have minus, but there's another minus. So we get plus and we have the integral between 0 and b of simply a over 2 e to the minus 2r over a dr. So, well, this first part will be unchanged. And now here we will once again evaluate. So at b, we get minus a over 2 times b, e to the minus 2. Now instead of r, we get b over a. And at 0, again, we get 0. So then we have this integral, which, well, it's simply a over 2 times this integral of the exponential, which we know is simply going to be minus a over 2. And now we get the same exponent, so minus 2r over a, and we have to evaluate between 0 and b. And of course, close parentheses. So now let's just multiply through by a here. So now what we need to do is just evaluate this. So if we evaluate this at b, right, if evaluating at b, we get e to the minus 2b over a. And when we evaluate at 0, we get minus 1. 
So here, of course, we just need to multiply through. Now, keep in mind that what we just found is this integral, right? So if we actually want to find the, prob the probability of finding the electron inside the nucleus, we need to multiply by 4 over a cubed. So let's just do that. So this is now p if we multiply by 4 over a cubed. Um, so let's go ahead and write that down. Now we can rearrange this a little bit better still if we factor out the exponential. So there you have it. This right here is the exact solution uh, for the probability of finding the electron inside the, the nucleus of the hydrogen atom. So you could just go ahead and plug in the values for B and A. Um, the B, of course, a B here being the value of the nucleus of the hydrogen atom, which is a proton, and A, of course, being the Bohr radius that we have already seen. And there you could get your answer, which would, of course, be very small. So now in part B, we want to expand the result from part A as a power series in the smallest number epsilon, which we'll call 2B over A. And we will show that the lowest order term is, well, that cubic. We will find all of that. And uh, this should be a suitable ap approximation because we know that, of course, the radius of the, of the proton B is going to be much smaller than the Bohr radius, okay? which we know is true. So let's take our result. Right, so we knew that the probability here of finding uh, the electron inside the nucleus is 1 minus, and now we have 2b over a, but now b over a will be epsilon plus 2, and now epsilon squared plus 1. Now we know what the power series of the exponential is, right? e to the x. This is simply going to be the infinite sum, right? So, so this would be, let's say, n equals 0 to infinity, of x to the n over n factorial. So plugging this in, of course, keeping in mind that in this case, x would be minus 2 epsilon. So we would have x to the n, so we will begin with n equals 0, so simply 1. Then we have plus x over 1 factorial, which is 1. So we simply get here minus 2 epsilon. Then we have plus now this thing squared, so 4 epsilon squared divided by 2. And then we get the next term, which would be now this thing cubed. So that would be minus this time, 8 epsilon cubed divided now by 2 times 3, so 6. So this is, and of course you would get higher order terms, but epsilon is already very small and going any higher uh, doesn't really bring anything new. Okay, so multiplying through, we have 1 minus, and now we just multiply through. Now let's see if there's any, anything that can simplify. So we have minus 4 epsilon squared plus 2 epsilon squared, and let's see, there doesn't seem to be any other square that I see, so for now this would simply be minus 2. Maybe let's uh, write it in blue so we know that we changed it and this one goes away. Then we have plus 4 epsilon cubed here, and minus 4 epsilon cubed right here, so this one goes away as well. Then we have minus 8, well, epsilon to the fourth is already way too small. So this is a way too small, we're just going to uh, get rid of those immediately, that's a bit smaller than we intended to go. And here we have, oh, look at this, we had, I had uh, not seen this before, so this is 2 epsilon squared as well, so this here is going to get rid of this. We have 2 epsilon minus 2 epsilon, and finally we can maybe write it like this, so 1 minus, now 8 over 6, that is th uh, 4 over 3, so 4 over 3 epsilon cubed. We can now get rid of the parentheses here, so we get minus 1 plus this, so the, these ones cancel out. And we can indeed see that the only term that is left is the one 4 thirds epsilon cubed, which epsilon, of course, keep in mind, is what we had called b over a. So we do get that the probability uh, it goes as this, right? Other than this, the terms would be of higher order than epsilon cubed, right? So the reason why we stopped at epsilon cubed is because it is the smallest order and it's already very small. But even higher than that, it's, it just is even, even, even smaller. So that's very small.
Okay, so now in part C, what we're going to do is just use a clever idea to find the same answer that we had before, but just in a much, much simpler way. So what we'll do is keep in mind that the nucleus is so small, right? B is so small that our wave function barely changes. Right? So if you think about it, our wave function is going to be anything. I'm just going to draw something. And our nucleus is basically here, <laughs> right? You can barely see it, but let's say it's there, very small. So if you go from here to here, I mean, the wave function is basically the same, right? And what exactly is the nucleus? The nucleus is going to be located at the origin. So that means that we can quite comfortably take our psi of r to just approximately be psi of zero. It's going to be constant within the nucleus, right? It's not going to change. And what is psi of zero, by the way? We can just go back up here and take a look at it. It's going to be one over pi a cubed because the exponent of zero is one. So this is going to be, so this is simply one over the square root of pi over a cubed. So now the probability of finding our particle inside the nucleus will be the integral over all of space of our probability density squared. Now, what is all of space? Well, we're going to integrate from zero to two pi, zero to b, or rather uh, all of the space that interests us. So this is zero to pi and now zero to b. And what is this uh, probability density? Well, that's simply going to be one over pi a cubed and then, of course, don't forget about r squared sine theta and then dr d theta d phi. OK, so the angular integral is going to be the same as before. So that's simply going to be 4 pi, right? So this integral and this integral, it just gives us 4 pi, right? Then we have um, these constants, so pi a cubed. And then we have the integral from 0 to b of r squared dr. Now, what is that? Well, that's simply going to be r cubed over 3. So that's r cubed over 3 evaluated between 0 and b. So here, well, the pi's cancel out and we get 4 thirds b cubed over a cubed, which is, of course, exactly what we got before. So you can see that this is indeed a reasonable approximation for this problem. So now in part D, what they ask of us is to use these values for B and A to get a numerical estimate for P. And plugging this in, right, we just plug this into our formula, so 4 thirds. Now instead of B cubed, we have 10 to the minus 15 cubed. So that would be 10 to the minus 45. And then we have to divide this by 0 0.5, which is also going to be cubed. Now, I like to do it like this. So 0 0.5 is 1 half, so 1 half cubed. And then we have times uh, 10 to the minus 30. OK, um, so this is what we have. And now we can simplify the exponents a little bit. So we have 4 thirds here. This is 1 8. So and it is 1 over 1 8. So we have to multiply by 8 here. And then we have 10 to the minus 15. And here, let's see, so this is 32 over 3. Uh, we can't really uh, simplify it particularly much, so we will have to just calculate it. So this is 32 over 3 times 10 to the minus 15. Now 32 over 3, that is 1.07 times 10 to the minus uh, 14. Okay, so this is the fraction of the time, basically. Right? This is the, the probability of finding the particle inside the nucleus. And that, of course, means that just this is the fraction of time that the electron would be inside the nucleus uh, if, of course, uh, the, our current description of quantum mechanics did apply fully to the problem, which it only partially does. Um, but this, is, as you can see, is very small, like we expected. Um, but it's still a very interesting calculation to make. So there it is. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider leaving a like on the video, commenting and subscribing, and maybe even either supporting me, maybe through a thank you or through my Patreon. So I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching.